In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will take a look at analysis of trusses and frames wherein we will learn about pin jointed frames and their analysis. When a number of bars or members are pinned together in such a way that one or more than one of its members are subjected to a number of forces, such a structure is called as a pin jointed frame. The basic difference between a truss and a pin jointed frame is in the case of external loading. In trusses, the forces act only at the joints, whereas in frames, the external force can be applied on members as well as on pin joints. Hence, the members or the bars of frames are subjected to bending forces as well as tension or compression. The figure alongside shows a frame where a mass M, that is load M, is acting directly on the member ST. Hence, it is a pin jointed frame. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. The complete analysis of a pin jointed frame primarily consists of calculation of the reactions generated at all pin connected joints due to external loads. The following steps are followed while analyzing a pin jointed frame. Draw the free body diagram of the entire frame and apply conditions of equilibrium to the entire truss to calculate the reactions at all the supports. Sum of all forces in x direction is zero. Sum of all forces in y direction is zero. Sum of moments of all forces is zero. Dismember the frame and draw the free body diagram of each member separately. At the internal connection that is pin, the directions of components of the reaction are assumed on any one of the member and the opposite direction is assumed on the other member. This is done because when an internal force is exposed, it occurs in a pair, having the same magnitude and line of action but opposite direction. Apply conditions of equilibrium to the members separately to calculate pin reactions, whatever possible. Kindly note that if any value of a pin reaction is found to be negative, it implies that the assumption was incorrect and the assumed direction of that reaction must be reversed. The following problem will be helpful to understand the concept behind analysis of pin jointed frame. The way we isolate the members, show the forces of the joints and finally apply conditions of equilibrium to the member to calculate the forces in the joints of the frame. Consider the frame shown alongside. Compute reactions at pin connected joints B, C and D. In this case, we only have to find pin reactions at B, C and D. We will first draw the free body diagram of the entire frame as shown below. We will first find the support reactions. Now, we will apply conditions of equilibrium to the entire frame. We will first equate summation of all forces in the x direction to zero. Thus, we will find horizontal component of the reaction at support A to be equal to zero. Then, we will equate the summation of moments of all forces about point A to zero. On simplifying, we get the normal reaction about point F to be 800 newtons. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the y direction to zero. Thus, we find that the magnitude of vertical reaction offered by support A is equal to 200 newtons. We will now dismember the frame and then draw free body diagrams of all the members separately as shown below. At the internal connection that is pin, the directions of components of the reaction are assumed on any one of the member and the opposite direction is assumed on the other member. Consider FBD of member CBA. Now we will apply conditions of equilibrium to member CBA. We will first equate the summation of moments of all forces about point C to zero. Thus, we get X component of pin reaction at B as zero. Then we equate the summation of all forces in the X direction to zero. Thus, we get X component of pin reaction at C as zero. Then we equate the summation of all forces in the Y direction to zero. Thus, this gives us an equation, say one which gives us a relation between the y components of pin reaction at B and C. 
consider FBD of member BDE. Now we will apply conditions of equilibrium to member BDE. We will first equate the summation of all forces in the x direction to zero. Thus we get x component of pin reaction at D as zero. Then we equate the summation of moments of all forces about point B to zero. To determine the moment arm of dy, we will consider similarity of triangles CAF and CBD on substituting the values of the lens and then simplifying, we find BD is equal to 2.5 meters. Thus, we get Y component of pin reaction at D as 1600 newtons in the assumed direction. Then, we equate the summation of all forces in the Y direction to zero. Thus, we get Y component of pin reaction at B as 600 newtons, but acting opposite to the assumed direction. Substituting the value of BY in equation 1, we get Y component of pin reaction at C as 800 newtons, but acting opposite to the assumed direction. Let's have a quick review of what we have studied in this lecture. We first learned about the pin jointed frames. The basic difference between a truss and a pin jointed frame is in the case of external loading. In trusses, the forces act only at the joints, whereas in frames, the external force can be applied on members as well as on pin joints. Hence, the members or the bars of frames are subjected to bending forces as well as tension or compression. Then we learn the method to analyze a pin jointed frame. The following steps are followed while analyzing a pin jointed frame. We first find all the support reactions acting on the entire frame by applying conditions of equilibrium to the entire frame. Then we dismember the frame and draw free body diagrams of all the members. Next we apply conditions of equilibrium to the members separately to find the pin reactions. 